So in this video, I'll be providing the solution to the organic chemistry exam questions. All right. So we'll be taking them in bits or in parts, starting from this one here, which is part one. All right. So let's look at some of the organic chemistry exam questions and their solution. Question one here says, okay, you have to tick this, right? That's a good. Tick this. That's good for the correct answer. All right. Question one AI says, dash is aluminium ore all right you have you're giving bauxite taconite limonite or hematite now for this your answer is bauxite so note that bauxite is an aluminium ore all right one aii ii says the following compounds are all super oxides except which of these all right so you have your options here okay now you can increase the quality of your video so that you can see these questions um correctly all right so if yours is blur you can just increase the you go to your settings right go to settings go to video quality and increase the video quality so that you can see the questions clearer all right let's proceed um for ii you ask the following compounds are all super oxides except now the question will now be what exactly is a super oxide so when we say super oxides what exactly are super oxides now let's let me give you a definition all right so note that super oxides are compounds that contains the super oxide ion now when we say super oxide ion we simply mean o2 to the power minus all right this is called a super oxide ion okay now they are also called hyperoxide or dioxide right so note that superoxides are also called hyperoxides or dioxides. All right. Now examples of superoxides include sodium superoxide. Let's start with. Let me give you an example. So let's have this sodium superoxide. Your formula for this is simply um, combining your sodium, right? Your sodium ion, which is Na plus, combine this with the superoxide, which is O2 minus of course if this um exchange now what we said for ions to combine to form um compounds we said they'll exchange their value this is minus one the one here comes down this way here the plus comes uh, come down this way so it becomes this so i'll now have n a d so i'll have n a then o2 all right so what i have here becomes um sodium superoxide right same thing works with potassium so if i have potassium potassium superoxide all right for potassium we know that your ion there is k so i have k plus combining with the superoxide ion o2 minus now what i'll have here is k o2 so this becomes a potassium um, superoxide. Also, we have cesium, right? We have cesium, cesium superoxide. Um, don't forget, cesium is CS. CS is positively charged one. That's your ion plus O2 minus, and this will give you CSO2. All right, so majorly when you have compounds that have a plus one ion charge, they will give you superoxides as you have here. All right, so if you go back to the question, so to give you um, superoxides as you have here, so let's go back to our question. All right, so if you look at this, okay, so back to this, we've said that cesium superoxide exists potassium superoxide exists sodium superoxide exists iron superoxide this one here why this compound exists it is not a superoxide right this compound exists it is not a superoxide so this becomes the answer here all right so feo2 it exists but then it is not a superoxide right now if you also check this compound here right um, this compound here, FeO2, is actually produced by the incomplete oxidation of ion 3, right? So that's it. All right, so let's proceed. Um, the third one there. The industrial preparation of oxygen from air involves 
um, your first option here is electrolysis, precipitation, crystallization, liquefaction, and fractional distillation. For this, your answer is liquefaction and fractional distillation. All right. So note that when it comes to preparing oxygen industrially, all right, um, here it involves a process where fractional distillation of liquefied air with nitrogen with nitrogen distilling as a vapor while um, oxygen is left as liquid so it involves liquefaction and fractional distillation next up the next question the iv says metals generally occur in solid states however dash is a metal that exists in liquid states at room temperature the metal that exists as liquid um at room temperature is mercury so the answer here is mercury all right av av says aluminum oxide is dash aluminum oxide is dash you have amphoteric xenophobic basic acidic the answer here is amphoteric so note that aluminum oxides are amphoteric now when we say amphoteric what does it mean now by Amphoteric, we mean that they can act as either an acid or a base in a reaction to produce salt and water. All right. So, in a reaction to produce salt and water, um, aluminum oxide being amphoteric means that it can act as either an acid or a base in a reaction to produce um, salt and water. That's the meaning. All right. All right. So, we're done with the A questions. Let's give it, let's get to B. B here says, give the IUPAC names of the following structures. So I will draw these structures and then I'll give the name for this structure. All right. So we have this one here. This is our first structure. This structure here. How do you name this? Now, note that for this compound here, you have to start your numbering from the part that gives you the least possible number to this substituent, which is this. All right. Now, it will be wrong for you to say one, two. That's wrong. You don't you don't count it that way. All right. The idea is this: if I'm counting one here, I have to count two here this way so that I can complete this bond here. All right. So you can see the bond. I have to complete from the start of this bond, which is here, to this bond here. All right. So in that case, that means the shortest way it, it would be counting this way: one, two. Observe that I have completed this double bond first before moving on. All right. So one, two, three, four five this has five sides five is a pent then you have three here you have this methyl attached to um carbon three so it becomes three methyl this compound is three methyl this compound is in a cyclic form so it becomes a cyclo all right three methyl it's in a cyclic form, so it becomes cyclo. So, cyclo. Um, this compound has five five carbon atoms. That becomes cyclo pent pent. Observe that this compound has a double bond that makes it an alkene. So, it becomes pent. Uh, you don't really have to say pent one in, right? So, if you say pentene, that's the correct. Um, pent one in right so you can do it this way but this is not actually the one here is not actually necessary so you can just say pentene because of course if i'm considering that this is three and i have just one substituent the pentene has to be from one so you can do it this way three methyl cyclopentene right or if you want to say cyclopent one in that's okay but it's not necessary anyways all right let's come to this question two we're giving this compound here so what's the name of this compound? Observe that first things first things first. I have what I have here is actually a benzene ring. All right. Then what you have here is an iodine. So iodine combined with benzene gives you an iodobenzene. So this compound is called the iodobenzene. All right. That's the name of this compound. The third one here we have this one here. Now observe that in this compound I have two double bonds. Now, to do the numbering that gives me the least possible count for my double bond will be moving from my right hand side to left hand side. So I would have one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
All right, so with this way now, observe that the carbon or double bond occurs at or starts from carbon 1 here and carbon 4 here. So that gives you 1, 4. Also observe that we have a functional group here having two sides, I and II. These two sides here. So it becomes a two carbon substituent, which is ethyl. So what I have here is ethyl. Observe that ethyl is attached to carbon 3. So this becomes 3 ethyl. So the name of this compound here is 3 ethyl. So 3 ethyl hyphen 3 ethyl. Now in total, I have 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 6 um, carbon atoms. So it becomes hex. For double for two double bonds, it's called a diene. So we call it a hexa. Hexa what? Observe that the double bonds were attached to carbon one and carbon four. So hexa one four. So hyphen one four hyphen diene. So this compound is called three ethyl hexa one four diene. That's the name of this compound. All right. So let's proceed to the next compound here. So question four here we have this particular compound. Um, this compound here contains both a double bond and a triple bond. Now we've also discussed this in the previous class where we say for compounds involving double and triple bonds that priority is given to the double bond. So I'll do this numbering in such a way that the double bond would have the least numbering. And that will be numbering from my right hand side to my left hand side. So I'll be having something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now at this point, there's a carbon here, 6, which starts the triple bond. Then there's a carbon here, 7, which ends the triple bond that we have here as 8. So in total, we have 8 carbon atoms, all right? All right, so if that's true, that means I have a substituent here. This one here is just one stroke. That's methyl. Also, I have another substituent here, which is just one stroke, and that's another methyl. So I have two methyl um, substituents here. The methyl substituents are attached at carbon 4 and carbon 5. So I'll be having the name as 4, 5. I have two methyl. So it becomes dimethyl. So 4,5-dimethyl. I'm done with this. If I look at this compound here, this compound has eight carbons as its longest continuous carbon chain. Eight is called an oct. Right, so I have oct. Now let's get double bond. The double bond is at carbon two. It becomes oct two. This is called an N, not in, okay? N. Right, so we use N when you have a compound that contains double and triple bond. So not like 2 in, but 2 N. Okay, next up, observe that triple bond here is attached to carbon 6. Becomes 2 N and then 6 alkyne ion. So it becomes this. So the compound is called 4, 5 dimethyl oct 2 N 6 ion. So this becomes the name of the compound. All right, so this is how we name compounds involving double and triple bond all right i already have a video for how to name compounds involving double and triple bond all right i'll leave the link in the video description all right let's check out the next question there i think that's all about this the final question in this part says the doctrine or theory of dash states that organic compounds can only originate from living things now the answer to this is called the vital force theory all right. So when when they now ask you the doctrine or theory of, so just write vital force. The answer here is vital force. It's vital force theory that states that organic compounds can only originate from living things. Although this was disproved later on. All right. All right. So all of these concepts. This is just um, the solution to exam questions. All right. For detailed explanation of all the different homologous series in chemistry. The alkenes, alkenes, alkynes, alkanols, um, including their nomenclature, their preparation, their reaction, etc. Do well to visit my website, www.jonahimari.com 
forward slash courses and get the organic chemistry course. All right, so I'll leave a video on how you can get the organic chemistry course from my website, all right, at the end of this video. But before then, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like this video, okay, and leave a comment, right? The comment helps us to grow. So leave a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to, if it's your first time or if you're yet to subscribe, please do well to subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this channel so that you can also get notified when we upload a new video. And don't forget to share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you so much and see you in the part two of the organic chemistry exam solution.